they did that. Wouldn't. Well, not on his online banking, but she could sign up under her. See, people don't understand online banking is by your social security number. So she could sign up and still start paying her bills online, but she wouldn't know how to stop his stuff. Thank you so much.
Hey, this week we had our vacation Bible school. Man, it was a great, great time for the kids. We had at least 25 kids there throughout the week. They had lots of fun and uh, learned a lot about the Lord. And I want to I thank each and every person that helped out, all the teachers, all the organizers, everyone who uh, put their time in this past week, the people who prepared the food. It was a wonderful week, and uh, I think the kids were blessed. And we are looking forward to uh, next year's uh, Vacation Bible School. But this morning, we want to show uh, just a short slide show of uh, some of the things that happened uh, during uh, Vacation Bible School. And the, the, the theme of, of uh, Vacation Bible School was called Stompers and Jumpers. <laughs> and uh, it, it was uh, dinosaurs were included. If you came into church and saw the dinosaur pictures and everything this morning, you can see what, what the Bible school. Kids love dinosaurs for some reason. They just love dinosaurs. And so uh, here is our, uh, our slideshow of the week. Jurassic. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put that together. 
as I said, we are looking forward to the ministry of using the Donald family and they're ready to present their end.
God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's take the time to pass the peace of Christ to one another this morning.
Jack, Arlene and Donna, and young Leo, and Karen, or for those uh, who are in remission right now, we pray for uh, a total healing. We pray that, that the cancer would not come back. You with each and every one of them. But we continue to pray for others with uh, various health problems. Our young ones, uh, Sophia and Colton, watch over them. All of our young ones, we thank you for this uh, growing youth program here. Continue to bless it. Watch over uh, Donna and Nancy. We think of uh, Luca and uh, we think of Shirley Benline's family. They, they just lost her. Watch over them and comfort their hearts. Uh, be with Randy and his health. We think of Sue and Bill. Uh, our friend Bill Bolden. Uh, Patrick's dad, Mr. McCormick. Be with him and watch over him. Watch over Damon. And we think of Taylor. We pray for his, your guidance in his life. Be with him. Continue to be with Jack and Dorothy. Watch over Celeste. Bill Feld Lord battle with Parkinson's. Continue to be with uh, Bruce and Jim. We think of Ron and, and Shane. Lord, so many of these people are having difficult health problems. Uh, they need your healing touch upon their lives. Be with Bill and Pat. We think of uh, Daisy and Hazel. Continue to be with Ron facing COPD. Young Harrison recovering from surgery. Watch over Lisa and Sue. Continue to be with Adam and his family and his young son. Watch over uh, Jason and Gunner. We think of uh, John and uh, Debbie. Chuck with his migraines and, and Carol Battle and Parkinson's. Watch over Vicky and Vicky and Bill. Continue to be with uh, Margie and uh, Maggie. We think of uh, Marty and uh, her problem with her hip and back. Continue to heal her. Be with Wayne and James. Watch over Raymond. And then, Lord, there are these unspoken requests various people, uh, and we ask, Lord, that with each and every situation, you would work through these requests, showing the way, shining your light upon the past, so that these families can make good decisions and move in the right direction. So, Lord, we thank you for all these things, and now we pray for this world that we're living in. It's a challenging world. It can be a, a dark and violent world. We pray for hope and light shining forth in this world for those who love you. Pray, Lord, that they would bring that good message of new life in, in Christ into this world. We pray for our military people around the world who are putting their lives on the line uh, to protect our freedom. Watch over them, guard their lives, bring them back home to their families when their time is done. And Lord, we pray for those around the world sharing the, the love and the joy uh, of faith in you, the joy of Christ in this world. Be with them, watch over them, and shine your light to each and every one of their lives. Now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of our prayer. Amen. This time we are going to honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings and to enjoy uh, the offertory song of the Dawn of Him.
are grateful because you have poured out in, in each of our lives so much, so many good things. And we take it for granted, but right now we want to focus on your goodness to us and realize that through us you can use the things that you give us, our time, our talents, our material things, to bless others, to build your kingdom here in this place. We thank you for that, Lord, and we pray that we would uh, take that responsibility seriously. We, we know that your blessings in our life overflow, and we can never outgive you for all those blessings. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Steve. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. This ends the Old Testament reading. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Peter. And Peter is writing to the church in Jerusalem. Hear the word of God. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the mountain, majestic mountain saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mount. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to the light shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by its own prophet uh, interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We pray for a deep understanding. We pray that your Holy Spirit would, would carry the meaning of these words to us this morning and make them clear in our hearts and in our minds so that we can grasp them. For as we, we do, we, we grow spiritually, and as we grow spiritually, the power of, of your presence in our lives increases, and that light within us shines brighter. So we pray, Lord, for a, a deeper understanding this morning. Bless us as we hear your word. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I love that passage that Dirk read to us this morning about Moses going up on the mountain and uh, communing with God and receiving uh, the commandments from God. And it, it talks about as Moses came down from the mountains, face low. To me, that's what should happen 
when, when we meet with God. When we meet with, with God, that, that relationship that we have should ignite within us and, and, and we should spiritually glow as we grow in that relationship with God. I was telling these things to our communicants class that, that, that's meeting every week now. These kids are going to join church. And uh, in this class, I, I, I try to set for these kids kind of the basics uh, of what the entire scripture is, is all about so that they can understand from Genesis to Revelation what that theme of scripture is all about. And, and it's basically this. God's love for us and God's plan to reconcile and, and redeem fallen humankind. In other words, God wants to bring us back. That's what the entirety of Scripture is all about. God's wanting to bring it back. If I could boil it down to one word, that, would, that word would be grace. God, God loves us so much that God wants to extend grace to us and, and, and reconcile and bring us back to God so that we can have that kind of relationship that, uh, that Moses had. And so I've been uh, teaching this, this communicants class. You know, uh, we kind of go over the, the entirety of the scriptures to get a good idea. And, and one thing that's really neat about the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament is that there are seven covenants throughout Scripture, and basically a, a covenant is a promise that God makes to, to a person or, or to a nation. There are seven covenants or promises throughout Scripture that is uh, explaining how God accomplishes this goal of redeeming and reconciling us back to Himself. Explaining how God extends God's grace. And uh, the, the first one that we read into is very early in the scripture. It's the Adamic covenant. Adam and Eve gets booted out of the garden. And it's a very dark time there for humankind. But God makes a covenant with Adam and Eve. God says uh, to Eve, one day, one of your offspring is going to defeat the serpent and the serpent's power of sin and death. Now this offspring that will come eventually, the serpent may bite his heel, the serpent may harm him, but this Savior is going to defeat the serpent. And so there is a light of hope there in that covenant early in Scripture. And then, of course, everybody knows about the Noahic covenant. Our human nature, we, we go in the wrong direction, after the Garden of Eden, mankind went in the wrong direction. Uh, everything went bad. The earth filled with violence and, and, and all kinds of troubles. And God wanted to start over. And so a flood came upon the earth. Noah and his family was protected in the ark. After 40 days and 40 nights, that ark settled there on the mountain. And they came out of the ark. And God painted that rainbow in the sky. What was the promise? What was the covenant? That, that's right. God, God said he would never destroy the earth that way uh, again. And that was a promise to Noah and, and his family. And, and when we think about our human nature and how we go in the wrong direction, uh, there, there has to be another way that God was going to bring forth uh, this, this offer of grace to us. How was God going to do that? If he was not going to destroy the world again and start over, how was God going to God going to do that. And we discover that in the next covenant, the third covenant, called the Abrahamic covenant. In the Abrahamic covenant, God said, this is how I'm going to do it. God made a covenant with Abraham and Sarah and said, through your offspring, I'm going to bring forth a nation. And I'm going to place that nation in the promised land and through that nation, I am going to bless the entire world. That's how I'm going to do it. Through that nation. And uh, we know what happened. As God said, uh, the offspring of Abraham and Sarah grew and grew. Uh, we know the story of Joseph and his brothers. Uh, they went down into Egypt because of the famine. They grew and grew and became a, a, a bigger and bigger people. 
They were enslaved by the Pharaoh. And uh, at that point, God sent someone else to deliver them so that they could be led to that promised land. And uh, that person was Moses. And that brings us to the Mosaic Covenant, what Dirk read to us this morning, the Mosaic Covenant. And uh, Moses led them through the wilderness and they and got to the edge of, of the promised land. And God followed Moses to the top of, of, of that mountain. And, and then in fellowship with God, God gave to Moses the commandments. And uh, he, in that fellowship with Moses, Moses came down off of that mountain. And he was all aglow. Spiritually, he was aglow, his face shone. And, and he presented those commands to the people. Basically, the commandments said, this, this is the kind of people God wants you to be. God wants you to be good. He wants you to love God with your entire heart. God wants you to treat each other with respect, love each other, care for each other. Don't steal, don't kill, uh, don't envy them. Uh, all of those things, if you follow the law, you will become the people God wants you to be. So that was the covenant uh, of the law, or the Mosaic covenant. Now, it's interesting, the next covenant that was made is known as the Palestinian covenant. Covenant. It was the fifth covenant, and it was right then at the same time as Moses. God said, here's my next promise to you. Here's my next covenant. If you don't obey the law, if you go in your direct, like the wrong direction, and, and you turn your back, and, and you start doing things that's going to mess your lives up and mess the world up, this is what, what's going to happen. I am going to allow you to be scattered as a people. You will be scattered across the earth. But I promise you this, although I will allow you to be scattered, I will one day bring you back and reform you as a nation in the promised land so that I can fulfill this goal of reconciliation and grace. And so that is the Palestinian covenant. You're going to be scattered if you go in the wrong direction, but I'm going to bring you back. You know what's amazing?